Hello everybody! It has been quite a long time since I have recorded an episode and I'm so deeply sorry for that. I have been for some reason, completely and utterly exhausted by the time I get off of work and lately have fallen into this trap of getting home, going to lay down and take a nap, and then not waking up until the next day. So, so where we left off last time was episode four in Joshua Tree, where you all found out how I got, or not how I got, but the backstory behind um, my name memory. So. After we left Joshua Tree, we went to Blythe, California, which is on the 10. It's like one of, actually I think it's the closest town in California to the Arizona border on I-10. And then right on the other side of the Arizona border is Quartzsite, Arizona, which at some point in the series I'm going to tell you all about Quartzsite, Arizona, because that is one of my favorite places. Uh, I'm not a hippie not a hippie. But anyway, so we went to Blythe, Arizona, and we dropped off, I believe we dropped off Holly and Emily, but I could be mistaken. It's been a while, so forgive me. Anyway, so we dropped the girls off in Blythe, Arizona, and we proceeded to head to Safford and Thatcher, Arizona, which if any of you are familiar with Arizona geography, so Blythe, California here, Safford and Thatcher, Arizona, over here, like outside of the screen. They are opposite sides of the state. So we head out there and it takes us all day to drive after dropping off the girls. We stopped at a hot spring that mother knew of, Andy knew of, just outside of Safford and Thatcher. And I believe Technically, we were trespassing. I honestly can't remember a whole lot from the day or so that we spent at that hot spring. Um, in fact, I don't even remember going into the hot spring. I don't think I did. But I remember taking a nap at the hot spring. I think I might have gotten really stoned and then took a nap. But I, I got woken up really abruptly. And I'm laying down in the back of the car of Arnold Palmer. And I get woken up very abruptly to Drew, like, smacking me on the face and being like, Memory, Memory, you need to wake up, it's something really, really important. And I'm like half asleep, and I'm like, oh, what is it, Drew? And as I start to gain my vision back from waking up, about this far from my face happens to be a Ziploc bag with two animals inside it, well, two creatures inside the Ziploc bag a live scorpion and a dung beetle looking thing. And they were both inside the Ziploc bag and Drew was shaking it over my head, like super freaking close. Like, look what I caught, memory. And of course I'm just, ah, freaking out. Like there's these bugs like this close to my freaking face. <sighs> I think I almost fucking pissed myself. Is just absolutely fucking ridiculous. But that ended up being a source of entertainment for a few hours was just watching the scorpion and the dung beetle inside the Ziploc bag and seeing which one would win. I gave up watching after a while because every time I would look they weren't doing anything. They were pretty much just staying on their opposite sides of the Ziploc bags just hoping we would let them go. But I believe the scorpion ended up winning in the end because scorpion. <laughs> I mean, like, who really is gonna win in this situation? Some dung beetle looking thing or a scorpion? Probably the fucking scorpion, of course. But the whole reason why we went to Safford and Thatcher is because Mother, and I believe Drew also, knew a person down there for, to protect his privacy, I'm gonna call him Cactus Man. So Cactus Man uh, was a friend of theirs and he happened to be partially Native American the reason they called him Cactus Man is because he had an extensive greenhouse full of various kinds of cacti. As far as plant life goes, it was really freaking cool to see what he did with his cactus. Like I believe he had taken, he grafted a peyote button onto, oh god, what's the other kind of cactus? 
Uh, but yeah, he had, he had grafted one hallucinogen, one hallucinogenic peyote button onto another hallucinogenic kind of cactus. And they were just growing together and it was really freaking cool looking. I did not partake in any cactus hallucinogens. Um, I don't think anybody did in this trip, but the reason I did not and was very adamant about not doing that is because I know that sort of hallucinogenics forces you to purge, meaning you have to vomit in order to hallucinate. Like you, you have to puke it up and then your trip starts and it's a really, really intense vision and, and journey for a lot of people. I'm good. I am not a fan of puking. I am okay with not doing that. But what I did partake in was some of the strongest pot brownies I've ever had. They did not tell me that they had made these pot brownies with like the most epic ganja butter around. Like this fucking shit was so strong. They didn't tell me. In fact, they didn't even tell me that they were pot brownies. They just offered me a brownie and it was like, hell yeah, I fucking love brownies. Didn't even think that there would be pot in it because I'm retarded. So I ate a whole fucking brownie and then happened to be comatose on a couch for like six hours listening to documentaries and people talking about cactus. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can really remember from hanging out at Cactus Man's house in Safford and Thatcher was like being really, really stoned and probably having some intense, really awesome conversations about things. Uh, stoned don't remember. And we headed towards Globe, Arizona. And every single time we stopped to pull over and let the dog pee, or for us to go pee, we inevitably would have probably 10 to 15 minutes of pulling out goat's heads from our feet. Which if you've never traveled through southern, southwestern United States, and you don't know what a goat's head is, it's this fucking burr or a seed of a particular type of plant. And they call them goat's heads, uh, they're these prickly fucking things, but they fucking hurt and they get stuck in everything. Oh my God. Do not try to walk barefoot in Arizona. If you have see a goat's head, just fucking don't, just don't fucking do it. Blah. So we drove through Globe, Arizona, which is another one of my favorite towns to drive through, not necessarily hang out in, but I really, really like Globe, Arizona because it's, um, I don't know, it's just kind of like an, almost like an oasis. Like the desert is everywhere around you, much like everywhere else in Arizona. But in order to drive through Globe, you kind of drive down into this valleyway and there's a little river and, and then you drive up and, and back on your merry way. But it was just the charm of this tiny little town in Arizona, it just gets me every single time I've, I drive through there. I've been through there, I don't, I can't count how many times off the top of my head right now, but if you ever get the chance to drive through Globe, definitely stop for a few hours and just, just walk around town. Like there's cute little antique stores and like vintage buildings that are, they look like they've been there for fucking ever. It's super adorable. But yeah, after, Driving from Safford and Thatcher, we drove through Globe, Arizona, and headed to Payson, Arizona. And in order to get to Payson, we had to go back, kind of backtrack a little bit and hit Phoenix and then go up. And we didn't stop and hang out in Phoenix because fuck Phoenix. Um, but Payson, Arizona is another one of those cute little towns, but it's not like Globe and it's not like Quartzsite. Um, Payson, Arizona is definitely a mountain town. Like, it's relatively large compared to some of the other places that I've been through, but, like, I mean, if you compared it to Ashland, they're probably about the same size. Yeah, I'd say. I'd say Payson, Arizona is about the same size as Ashland, Oregon. Cute little mountain town, they've got a grocery store, high school, whatever. But the whole reason we went to Payson, Arizona is because we were heading to the Arizona 420 Earth Day Rainbow Gathering, which was my first rainbow gathering. And guess what? That's gonna be the next 
next episode. Yep. Yep, I'm gonna make you wait. I know this was a super short video, but I kind of need to give the Arizona Rainbow Gathering its own episode because that was the episode where I actually start going by memory and I have a lot of memories that I want to share with you. So thanks for kicking it and uh, being super supportive of me even with my dry spell guys. I'm so sorry I haven't been putting videos out and um, I'm gonna try and change that. So my goal is to put a new episode out once per week um, until this season is over and then we will probably take a little bit of a break and then come back for season two. That's my goal. I'm gonna try not to leave you guys with any more dry spells. Uh, stay posted for more Dirty Kid live streams. There's one once a month now instead of I was gonna do them every other month but now I'm gonna do them once a month since you guys seem to like them. And yeah, I guess I will uh, see y'all down the trail somewhere. Ciao! <laughs>